Hey everybody, welcome to another video review. So uh, tonight I'm going to be taking a look here at the newest entry from Sideshow's Fairy Tale Fantasies line, uh, inspired by the art of J. Scott Campbell. So the first one, if you recall, is um, The Little Mermaid, <coughs> and this one uh, is going to be Tinkerbell. So first, let's take a look at the exclusive. Again, like I mentioned with um, the Little Mermaid, the Little Mermaid exclusive. The exclusive uh, for this line, um, basically, are metal uh, prints. And so I do like these over the, um, I guess, the regular, you know, cardboard prints they used to do. I think it's pretty nice and classy. They, you know, put in a little tiny base, and you get to just slot it right in here. And it just kind of shows you the control art um, that this uh, statue was based off of, um, including some pictures that weren't even made available, maybe from J. Scott Campbell's um, private sketchbook, Work in Progress, etc. Uh, and I think this is actually from the one of his calendars. So a very nice accent uh, to the actual statue itself. And I think you know this is a nice exclusive. I like exclusives like this because they actually take the time to give you a proper display for it. It's not um, critical for the enjoyment of the piece, but it is a very nice accent because you, know, you have the actual statue and you have the control art, you can display it next to each other. So that's very nice. And uh, again, kind of gives you an idea of the source art and inspiration uh, behind it. So because this is metal, there's a little bit of glare and I do apologize for that. Um, but there, there you go, okay? So, Let's take a look here at uh, Tinkerbell herself. Here she is, uh, you know, all her glory. Um, a few things. Let's start with the base. Uh, I really like the base. Um, this is basically a compass and it sort of shows you, um, it, this is kind of here to give you a hint or some sort of perspective to show you how big Tinkerbell really is or rather how small she is. So if you uh, just imagine this is like the size of a nice large compass uh, then you can, of course, extrapolate and get an idea of how um, her scale and how large she is. I um, really like the detail of the base. You have sort of a little clock here. It's in burnished gold. Here's um, the crocodile, Tick Tock, on both sides. What else here? Here's the actual tail all the way over here um, and over here this actually moves a little bit in case you're wondering you see that this is actually moving I don't want to force it this is, looks like it'll snap off but it does move a little you know a little um, the little button here where, where it's at I don't know whether this is a wave or something like that but you know, it's what, what maybe a water effect we can clearly see again the alligator all the way here. That's one of the tails, and that's the other tail. So very nice. And then the compass itself is really neat. It actually kind of shows the pointer and then the points of the compass itself. This actually is glass or clear acrylic. It's very convincing. So uh, that's quite nice. I'm gonna back up a little bit and just sort of show you what she looks like from afar. Slowly moving her. So you sort of have an idea of what she looks like, the whole thing. <coughs> the gossamer wings are made out of um, plastic, I believe. And it's very nice. You can definitely uh, see through them. They've done very well. So you can kind of see her, her walking pose from all around. This is kind of the, the angle you're meant to look at her since she's turning her head and looking at you. Um, <clears throat> so a couple of things. Let's start first with uh, how she is secured to the base. And this is kind of tricky because, again, this is not like a regular black base or you know, sort of a boring base um, where you can have fixation perhaps at two points. Usually for um, a statue, to be considered, you know, in my opinion, well fixed or stable to the base, you do really typically want to have two points of fixation. 
if you're going to do away from that, then the one point of fixation better be incredibly solid, pretty thick or long um, bar in order to prevent future issues with the leaning or instability. But in her case, um, things are complicated by the fact that this is after all Tinkerbell, which means that she's quite tiny and quite delicate. And so her legs are just essentially nothing. They're very, very small, very, very thin. And on top of that, the base itself, again, is modeled after a compass, which means that this part here has to be clear. And so um, you have to kind of figure out a way uh, to secure to secure her without messing up this nice, clear, uh, kind of, you know, clear face. So their solution uh, was to actually mold or cast sort of a clear resin peg all the way up and then there's a groove in her foot. And inside the groove, there's actually, looks like a little metal needle or something, but there's no corresponding hole to put it in. And um, it's really difficult to actually put this in here. You don't actually put it top down. I had to actually go from outside and I actually had to press sort of in a backward diagonal direction and I actually snapped the um, resin clear peg here. I snapped it into the groove. And you do hear a snap, and you know you're you're a little bit obviously terrified that you're gonna you know you're gonna break this ankle. Um, but that's how I figured out how to do it for mine. I don't know if they're all the same or not. Uh, it'd be interesting to hear different, um, I guess, versions of this. Um, but for the life of me, I I can't. It does not look like this is going to be able to fit here and get the foot all the way down. There is like maybe a millimeter or two where she's lifting. Interestingly enough, um, even though this is going on here, there's a little bit of space, the back foot, um, the back right foot actually touches the glass perfectly. So again, you know, from afar, you really can't tell and it could simply be that this is the way they designed it. So it looks like she's in mid-step. So something to um, be forewarned about when you're putting it together is to be very careful here and fiddling this uh, foot onto the peg is not easy. And even when you have her on here, if you move her around, she is a little bit unstable, as you can see, I can move her because again, back here, uh, there's nothing fixing it. She's just on the glass. So be careful about that because you can scratch the, um, uh, the toes or the glass itself if you allow her to move too much. You, you do kind of want to keep her steady and move her with two hands, with one hand sort of holding the legs or the other one, um, moves the actual base to avoid excessive movement of this. <clears throat> but other than that, she's rock uh, rock solid uh, because this thing, again, snaps in really, really tight. Now, God help me if I ever want to get this thing off because I don't know if I'm going to be able to without breaking this. So uh, that's a problem, obviously, for a, a different day. And so hopefully um, I won't have to worry about that for a while. Um, if you're really worried, obviously, one thing you can do is just take a blow dryer and do this for about 30, 40 seconds on high, and that's gonna turn everything soft, and that might make it a little bit easier to slot this in. And I might have to do that if I ever wanna take her off of this peg without, again, breaking this. Um, so something to think about. <clears throat> now moving on, the good thing is um, she's very low risk for leaning because she's pretty statuesque. You know, you, you back up, she looks like she's right dead straight on, she's not leaning to the left or right. And because the wings here are so, uh, light, they're just plastic, it's very un unlikely that this is going to cause any leaning over time either. Um, so let's kind of just take a look at the sculpt. So here's her leg, moving on up, and now, now it's focused. Here's her costume, the little leaves right here. Here's her face. Arms. Here's the the wing, like we talked about. Here's the back. Moving on up. I'm trying to move slowly so that my iPhone camera has a chance to actually focus on the right parts. Get a nice shot of her, uh, her face. There you go. Go 
so we can catch some of the, the nice detail, the paint and the shade, the shading here. A little blurry, I apologize for that. Backing off here, taking a look. So she comes in three pieces, um, the base, the body, and then the head detaches. And the head is magnetized, so that's nice. Compared to the Danger Girl Abby Chase, where it wasn't. Overall, there's been some criticism of her paint app. Uh, compared to the prototype, uh, her, her skin is a little bit less pale. It's a lot more pale in the prototype. But a lot of that is actually, I think, just lighting to, as well. Because um, when I first got her, we put her under some, you know, some bright light, and she does actually look reasonably pale. Um, maybe from this video, it looks like she's a little bit more tan. But I think the effect in person is not quite as drastic. Uh, overall, she's not, you know, completely flat. I think there's a lot of very nice. Uh, see how she wriggles when you hit her accidentally. Again, the problem is that she's only fixed here, and there's a lot of give here. So um, I do feel like you know she has a lot of nice shading of her costume, the leaves, um, and you know of course there's not a lot to her because you know the wings are of course gossamer and they're plastic, and then you just have her little you know bikini leaf, and everything else is essentially um, flesh tones. Um, she does have the nice green um, like uh, highlighters on her eyes, on her lids. The makeup there is nice, uh, the lip is nice and pink, uh, pretty green eyes, and she has the, the, green, um, the green hair here, you know, the, the choker, the R band, you know, the little leaves around the thigh. Um, they did a very nice job uh, painting a little bit, um, uh, a little bit of gloss for her toenails. Yeah, each toe is sculpted uh, very nicely here and uh, you can also appreciate that here as well yeah. so I mean overall um, I think you know they did nice detail I mean the sculpt of her feet are very nice you can see the arch of it uh, it's hard you know to sculpt feet like that and make it realistic it's hard to sculpt at this scale you can see every little toe here every little uh, nail and then gloss in the nail, it's a nice touch. Same thing back here, a very, very uh, nice base. Again, the compass with the clear, the clear acrylic or the clear glass. Um, and then overall, uh, there is some subtle shading of her skin, uh, maybe a little bit less than what you would have wanted compared to the prototype, but being you know, a factory paint, I certainly give this a, a very solid effort, a good effort, nothing to be ashamed of in my opinion, and they did a great job with her face. I'm gonna take her head off. Um, so maybe you can see it a little bit better. So here it is there. Again, you can see the green eyeliner right there. All around. No googly eyes, appropriately turned toward the right. Slots on right here. No gap really to be seen. So, yeah, I mean, a very, very um, good 3D representation of the control art over here. And um, I do like the job that the sculptor did, sort of, you know, giving her that sass and that attitude um, sort of capturing her kind of runway walk, you know, her feet kind of tippy-toeing, very graceful, you know, very live um, movements and kind of capturing her mid-walk uh, with a little bit of that hand motion right here, a little bit of attitude and her just sort of looking at you with that sultry gaze, a little bit mischievous, so I think, uh, you know, the sculptor did a great job, again, sort of capturing that moment um, from the control art right over here. 
So this is the second in the line. Um, I thought the, the first one, The Little Mermaid, was actually quite good. Um, but there was a little bit of disappointing quality control issues, you know, especially the area where the wrists met the hands, for instance. And I felt that the uh, paint job was a little underwhelming, um, a bit simplistic. Um, the same criticism, I think, can be leveled at Tinkerbell as well. But I, for some reason, I just like the paint job on her a little bit better. Um, I think the quality here is, is you know, solid, nothing spectacular, but good. I really like the base um, on her. So overall, I'm very pleased with it. Uh, and I think she will go very nicely with my other uh, Tinkerbell, uh, the, the custom one by painted by John Allred. Uh, it's a nice match uh, for that one. And of course, you know, the other, that one is a lot more complicated, but this one is, a, is a, a, quite a bit simpler. And I am looking forward to the third in the line, which is uh, Alice. And that one should be um, quite, you know, should leave quite an impression because it should be quite a bit bigger. She's on a mushroom. Um, you know, it's a little, quite a bit more expensive, almost $100 more expensive. So it should look quite nice when that comes out. So I'm looking forward to it. I hope the quality control continues. Um, and this one, you know, simple, but for the price, I think it's like 300 and change. So for $300, you know, in today's, you know, kind of statue market, um, not bad, you know, not bad. Um, but it does sort of give you a little bit of pause. Uh, remember that $300 was how much the original uh, Incredible Hulk by Andy Burgos cost. You know, the OG Hulk was 300. So you compare that 50 pounds with this, but you know, that was over 15 years ago. So things are a lot different uh, now than back then, but it kind of shows you where, you know, where things have gone, both price-wise, you know, and uh, quality-wise in this hobby sometimes. But overall, I'm quite pleased with her. If you're on the fence, uh, I think she's a great pickup. And if you're a fan, obviously, of J. Scott Campbell or of um, sort of a more um, adult um, and um, sly, you know, almost a cheesecake uh, version of some of the Disney characters, then th this is a great line uh, to you know, collect. Uh, so far, again, they've released Little Mermaid and uh, Tinkerbell, and Alice is uh, going to be coming out as well. And if things go well, they may announce Cinderella, depending on whether they actually want to go through with it or not, depending on how well the line sells. <clears throat> and I'm glad that they are not doing these... Um, constant ridiculous variants for the rest of the line. Um, I guess there's not much opportunity to do so, but for The Little Mermaid, you know, they had the original version, then they had the retailers exclusive, and now they come out with a third one with her in blonde hair. And you just have to ask yourself, why would, would you need to do that? What's the point of that? Um, what demographic are they going for? Uh, this is not even uh, anywhere close to the control art. J. Scott Campbell never <laughs> drew A Little Mermaid with blonde hair, really. So it does kind of make you wonder what, what what's going on. So it'd be interesting to see the edition size. Maybe they're going to go for like a super duper limited version, um, but you better not make more than about 50 to 100 because it's hard to imagine too many people uh, jumping on that uh, when mo many of us have already bought the, the first two versions, you know? So that's my two cents on that. But you're not gonna give us a Tinkerbell with a purple leaf or a purple dress, for instance. Uh, you know, she's going to be green and the same thing with Alice and her iconic blue dress. So I don't, I don't really see a repeat of these uh, variants for the rest of the line, uh, fortunately. So I hope you enjoyed that. And um, I'm going to kind of put this next to each other right here so you have an idea of how she looks. And until next time, do take care.